This way, the world turned me to a thud. Niggas ask me how I'm doing, hit them with that shoulder shrug. Cause deep up in my heart, I'm knowing they don't give a fuck. YouTube Watch Gang, what's the deal, man? It's your boy, bro. And I'm back with a quick story time, bro. Uh, and to be honest, bro, I got what? I got about 15 minutes to tell the story, bro. Hopefully, I can do it in a short period of time, bro. But it's it been on my mind for like a month now, probably longer than a month, bro. But I feel like it's important for me to tell the story, bro. But uh, a little bit about myself, bro. I kind of got like, ain't no kind of tool, bro. I, I got like like a hustler spirit, bro. I got like the spirit of a person that, uh, for lack of better term, lack of better reference, it's hard for me to keep a job, bro. And it's not hard for me to get a job, it's just hard for me to keep a job because I'm the type of person, bro, I don't like having authority, bro. It's not even authority, it's I don't like having to ask for certain things like, hey, can I get my birthday off? Or hey, can I go take my lunch? Or hey, can I take my 10 minute break? I don't, I don't like that part of myself, bro. And uh, the reason I'm telling this story, bro, is to tell y'all where I get it from, to where I get the hustler spirit from. But I'm one of them people, bro. I really do not like having to answer to nobody, bro. I always, uh, I just like being in charge, bro. Like four years ago, five, four and a half years ago, 2019, 2020 years, bro. I bought a whole bunch of taco equipment and I started talk, selling tacos for a living, bro. And that really kind of enhanced my hustler spirit. And I realized, bro, I could do this entrepreneur thing, bro. I could do anything I put my mind to, bro. And it took for me to uh, take that leap of faith to realize, like, that's really who I am, bro. But where my hustler spirit come from is my mama, bro. My whole life, I've seen my mama with probably one or two jobs. It, it could have been more, bro, but as far as I'm concerned, because I used to go to work with her. I used to go to work with my grandma as well. I used to go to work with everybody. But, uh, yeah, my mama, I've seen her at, like, one or two jobs, bro. And uh, she always, I guess, had enough, bro. I never really went without. The only thing I went without was my mama, because she was so busy hustling and trying to make sure that I had whatever lifestyle she was trying to provide me with, whatever she seen fit. But, uh, yeah, I get my hustler spirit from my mama. The title of this video is My Mama Gave Me My First sack bro yeah and it's a true story real talk my mama gave me my first sack uh and i think that was the best thing that she ever did for me and the worst thing that she ever did for me because i don't never get content bro i can't work at a job for 30 years i can't work at a job for a year bro this is the longest i ever had a job in my life i done had them 20 something jobs i've been working since the age of 15 bro but i think it's a gift and a curse because i do not like clocking in on nobody else's clock bro but sometimes you got to make them sacrifices to get to where you need to go and that's where this story comes into play my mama gave me my first sack bro real talk uh i was about 10 11 my mama gave me my first sack and a lot of y'all y'all gonna be mad because it's clickbait for real on my mama though uh the first sack my mama gave me, bro, wasn't no drugs, it wasn't no, you know, D-O-P-E. I don't know what we can and can't sell on YouTube, but it, it wasn't none of that, bro. The sack that my mama gave me, bro, what I'm referring to is a big sack of candy, bro. Like I tell y'all, within my videos, bro, my mama was a hustler. Like, she, she'd go in the store and come out with whatever, bro. But in this case, my mama, she used to, she used to flip the candy, bro. You know, she'd go to the 99 cent store, to all the stores, to, uh, what's the Sam's Club, Costco, all that and come out there with the candy and she just flip that however she got to, bro. But one day my mama messed around and gave me my own sack of candy, bro. And I grew up, uh, damn near being known as a candy man, low key. I didn't have a candy house. I was just a dude with the candy. But um, where it really made the biggest impact is when my mama went to, went to prison and all that and I wound up in the group home. When she came home, I was still in the group home and she was still on the same stuff, bro. One day I remember my mama dropped off uh, a sack of candy. And I had been selling candy all throughout my childhood, like like 11 on up. I went to Actors uh, Junior High School. I was selling candy at Actors, bro, and stacking my money. I remember I had a wad with like $32 and I thought I was rich because at that time that was a lot of money to me. It still is a lot of money to me. That's down there, a, a gas tank, half a, half a tank or whatnot. But uh, yeah, what made the most impact is when I got to high school. Uh, my mama came home from prison, whatever. 
She was getting her stuff together and she came back to the group home and dropped off a sack of candy to me, bro. It's like back to the norm, bro. And the reason I say it made the most impact is because in high school and junior high is really when you want to start. Or not start, it's really when you do start developing your own sense of uh, finding out who you really are, developing your character. So I remember I was in high school, bro, going to Bakersfield High School, BHS, you feel me, Driller Gang. I'm talking about, and, uh, yeah, bro, my junior, senior year, my mama had dropped off a bag of candy, and I'm back rolling, bro. And don't be mad at me, because this is for show sure clickbait, bro. My mama gave me my first sack, bro. It's just not a sack of the stuff that y'all, you know, think I'm referring to. And like I said, the reason it made an impact is because around that time, I started developing my style, my character. I started wanting some dollars in my pocket, bro. And she did that, bro. My mama threw me an alley -oop when I was in high school. And all throughout high school, for the most part, for the last two years, at least, I was a candy man, bro. I used to walk around because I played basketball up. Uh, I'm talking about no little Kobe. I used to play basketball, bro. So I used to carry all of my candy in an empty shoe box, bro, just to disguise it. Because if I walk around with a box of candy, that the security guard to whoever, I'm pretty sure they would have been tripping on it. And low key they was, bro. That's why I wound up switching from whatever I had to a shoebox. Uh, you know, I walk around with a shoebox. They're not going to second guess that. Even though it's kind of like, why I do run around with a, a, a shoebox? But yeah. I used to walk around with a shoebox, bro, full of candy, bro, and I used to give out deals, like, you know what I mean, bro? Uh, two for a dollar. I remember sometimes, bro, I would pass the box, I, you know, because everybody pretty much knew me, bro, and they, you know, I'm a cool dude, so I didn't have to worry about nobody stealing, bro. And if they owed me, they'd pay me, bro. Uh, it was just different times back there. But yeah, bro, I used to go to high school with a big ass uh, uh, size 13 shoebox for the Snickers, Skittles, uh, for the most part, everything was in good condition. I ain't never came across a piece of candy that melted. I ain't never had no complaints, but I used to go in the classroom and be like, hey, bro, you, you got candy today? Bro, I passed the whole, the, the, the whole box around the classroom. And by the time I get the box back, of course I'm watching, but by the time I get the box back, bro, uh, it's full of money, bro. I know how much candy I got in here. I know what to expect. And when people can't pay, I wasn't too much tripping. Like I said, I'm damn near one of the school mascots, bro. I was, you know, uh, I would like to say a popular nobody, bro. You know, I, I was in the way, but I was out of way. Like, you know, I was there, but I wasn't trying to be seen, bro. I was a part of the crowd, but I wasn't trying to be seen, bro. So yeah, I, I didn't really have those problems and trust issues, bro. For the most part, I can't name not one person that didn't pay me back. And I think that right there, that level of trust helped me establish relationships with certain people that you would never expect me to have relationships with. Yeah, bro, I used to pass that thing around class and it'll come back full of money. And the people that couldn't pay me right then and there, hey, bro, can I get this? I got you. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, it's nothing. You hear me? Yeah, go ahead and take that. And the next day they'll pay me or the following day or if they couldn't pay. They just say, uh, uh, I got you, I got you. And for the most part, bro, as far as I can remember, everybody that owed me paid me, bro. What I didn't have to press nobody. It was it was all off of relations, all off of, uh, and people treat you how you carry yourself, too. People treat you how you treat yourself, family. But yeah, bro, that was a dope experience in my life. In my life. One of the dopest experiences in my life because I developed the spirit of a hustler. I always had it, bro, but that solidified it because I'm in high school now, junior high school now. And um, it's important, bro. It was important to me that my up, my upkeep and my appearance was up to par. So I used to take the candy money, and uh, I don't, I don't think I was giving it to my mama to get some more candy. I just think she was always just trying to look out for me and teach me how to be self-sufficient, bro. I don't know if that was her goal, but that's one of the things she did, bro. And if it was her goal, I appreciate it. If, if she didn't know what she was doing, I still appreciate it because she created a monster, bro. I wake up every day, hit 13 hour shifts. It's hard for me to do that, but I got certain goals that I'm trying to accomplish in life. And um, I understand that you gotta make certain sacrifices to get to a certain level that you're trying to reach. But I, I wanna say I apologize for the click, babe, but this is just a story, bro. My mama gave me my first sack. My mama created the, 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 the monster that I am today, you feel me? Uh, I just love to hustle, I love to be free. I don't like having to, uh, like for my son's birthday, I had to request those days off. Bro, a real boss, a real leader, a real somebody, bro, you don't request those days off. You just go do what you gonna go do. And some people are meant for the workforce. Yeah, some people are meant for that, bro, but I don't I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. 
Don't nobody want to wake up every day and got to raise their head and say, can I use a restroom? I don't go through that right now. Luckily, I'm in a great position. And uh, I don't really have those issues. But at the same time, the little issues I like, like, I don't like authority, bro. It's not like I don't like the police authority. I don't like people telling me what to do better. I just don't like having to ask for permission because I'm so used to being in control, bro. Not in full control, but I'm so, you know, I go I go sell this amount of candy and I got money. I don't have to wait for the group home to pay me uh, five bucks every Friday, 10 bucks every Friday. And sometimes they'll miss a Friday and, and such and such, so they double up next week. I always like to be secure, bro. And what my mama did by giving me my first sack, she made me feel like, uh, one, everybody need help. But if I don't got the help, I can do it by myself, bro. I can sell this candy. I can find something to sell, bro. She created the spirit of a hustler, a straight monster, bro. I love that shit. Uh, and it sucks. But if we gonna keep it real, I love money, bro. They say money don't bring you happiness, bro. Uh, then you give me all your money and see how, how, how hard I fucking crack a smile, bro. I love it, bro. I love what it's capable of doing. I love the joy that it's capable of bringing you. Uh, I just hate having to do certain things for it, bro. You feel me? It kind of messes with my manhood. Low key, I be feeling like, damn, I gotta ask for permission to, 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 to take my birthday. I gotta ask for permission to go here. Like, and I understand, bro. Uh, I wasn't born no trust fund, baby. Who was this? Yeah, I wasn't born no trust fund, baby. Uh, everybody ain't born with a silver spoon, a gold spoon, or nothing like that, bro. My spoon was still good enough for me, but, uh, I appreciate the fact that she even thought about just, hey, take this, son. You can make your own money now, bro. And it's cool, because when the ice cream truck come out, you go off campus at BHS, we got off campus. So when you go off campus, you can do your own thing. You feel me? You can, go, you can buy your homie ice cream. You can buy your girl a slushie. You can buy shit, the big bag of hot Cheetos. You ain't got to steal no more, even though I was still stealing. No, I'm talking about, I, I was still doing my thing because I didn't like spending money either. I, I'd be trying to hold on to my little fun guns and money guns, you know what I'm saying? But that's great, bro. I know I, uh, in my music, I, t I tell y'all a lot about the bads, a little bit about the goods, bro. But I think it's important that I highlight the great things that my mama did for me. I think it's real important. Like I said, I don't know if she did it on purpose. I don't know if she knew what type of monster she was going to create. Because, like I said, I got goals, bro. And sometimes I deviate from my plan often. I deviate from my plan and try to find a different route, but the goal is to stick to your route and see it through. And what my mama did by giving me my first sack has turned me to a hustler, an entrepreneur, excuse me. It showed me the world in a different way that nobody else showed me. And I don't think she did that on purpose. Like right now I got my LLC, my EIN number. I'm gonna go file a fictitious business name. Uh, and do my DBA ass, da 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 da, whatever I'm getting into, whatever industry I'm getting into. But my mama created that monster. My mama started all of that by giving me my first sack, bro. And if y'all ever experienced something like that from your parents or whatever, drop a comment down below and let me know what your parents did for you. Like they your first alley oop, you took that and dunked it and made something out of it. Let me know, bro, if you experienced something like that. Like I said, my life ain't always been peaches and cream at all, bro. I might have had peaches or I might have only had the cream. But I learned how to work with that, bro. You know, peaches uh, ain't the only thing that cream can go on. You ever have strawberries and cream? You gotta make your own, you know what I'm saying, concoction and, and figure that shit out. Life gives you the cards, you gotta learn how to play it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you reshuffle the motherfuckers and you play your next and you play your next and you play your next and eventually you, you're gonna develop your own sense of, uh, who you are. Yeah, shout out to my mama, bro. Clickbait for show. She gave me my first sack. A lot of y'all probably read the title. Said, this nigga mama gave me a sack? Who the fuck is she? Gr Grizel the blocker? Kinda. She Grizel the candy lady. But she did that for me, bro. And I got the whole idea because the people that stayed behind us, they had the candy house. You go in there by the popsicles and the partners, chips, nachos, sodas. Y'all know y'all know the Hispanics and hustlers, bro. And I got, I'm a, I'm, what it say? I woke up working like a Mexican, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like real life, bro. And that's, that's why I salute to all my, you know what I'm saying? My Latinos and Hispanics and Mexicans. And, and, and I apologize if I got it all discombobulated, but y'all know who I'm referring to, bro. I like y'all hustle, bro. I, I like it, bro. Y'all get on the side of the road, sell some flowers for hours, bro. You sell some fruit, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's kind of where I got the idea from. I believe I mentioned it to my mama, bro, but she gave me my first sack, bro. 
and I've been on ever since. Life ain't been peaches and cream ever since, but I've always been stuck with a hustler's mentality. I don't want to work for you. I'd rather do my own thing. You feel me? Create my own woo wow. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I will work. I work. That's one thing I will do. I work. But the goal is to figure out how you can buy your way out of slavery. You know what I'm talking about? Don't nobody want to do this shit for 30 years. It's people that have been in my job in the first week. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's people that have been at my job since before I was born, bro. And in June, bro, I'm finna hit big 30, 30, 30, finna have a birthday party and all that, bro. Uh, we're gonna do nachos and all the zoom zooms and lamb lamb. We're just gonna have a great time. But uh, yeah, that's that's right, bro. And it made me smile, bro. I'm trying to hold back tears, but that's a very, 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 very big impactful moment in my life, bro. That, that, that sack of candy changed my life, bro. 2019, 2020, I took a leap of faith and I sold tacos for a living. A big, big, big change in my life. I realized, bro, you can really do this. You just gotta learn this shit. You gotta learn the game, cause it ain't for free. They ain't just gonna teach you how to do it. You learn that shit, and maybe you could teach somebody else that's trying to do it. I could teach you how to get an LLC. I could teach you how to get an EIN number. I could teach you how to get a fictitious business name. I could teach you about a DBA. A DBA is doing business as. You know what I'm talking about? I could teach you all that, bro, with the game. For me, they say it's to be sold, not to be told, bro. But as long as y'all keep on tapping in, ain't nothing to be sold over here. Probably some merch later on, but I'm not gonna say the game if it could change your life like it changed mine. And currently, I do. I am employed by somebody else, but I'm using that employment to buy my freedom back. I'm going to CDL school. I got my exposed carry permit. Got my guard card. I got a forklift certification. I like to keep my avenues open so when things slow down, I can jump back into the plantation lifestyle until I figure it out, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing bad with work, working, but the only thing I find bad is when you've been working for somewhere for longer than I've been alive, bro. It'll never be me, but that's the story about, you know, my mama gave me my first sack and how it impacted my life. You feel me? From a hustler to a hustler, go get her to a go get her, go get yours, I'm gonna go get mine. I love you, man, it's your boy, fella fella, bro. Uh, Yeah, bro, another juicing video gonna come soon. I'm gonna teach y'all to show y'all the recipe that me and my girl or my girl she been tapping in and she be doing her juice thing, bro. And that shit be real, real, real delicious. Like, what's his name? Delicioso from Dora. Is that who I'm talking about? Yeah, Delicioso. Yeah, bro, real Delicioso on this motherfucker. But, uh, yeah, bro, a hustler spirit. I love y'all. And like I said, lately, I've been slowing down on the content because I plan on my I ain't planning on, I'm transitioning to a healthier lifestyle. And I got certain goals that I'm trying to reach and certain things that I'm trying to teach. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all though. Tap in, make sure you like, share, hit that notification bell. And I apologize for the clickbait, but it is a true story. Your mom, you know, my mama gave me my first sack. And I ain't been the same since. Hustlers, nigga.